Welcome everyone. Today we're going to be talking about Salesforce's Service Cloud module. Service Cloud module tracks any cases that are opened by your customers on the product you sell. The cases usually resolve, revolve around something that is not working as it's supposed to within your product. The cases are usually routed to a support agent who calls and help the customer fix those issues. Service Cloud includes the case object, which is the main, the core of Salesforce. We'll also be looking at the different views that's available. We'll also be taking a look at the community where customers can collaborate with each other and help each other resolve similar issues. So in today's agenda, we'll be talking about the standard view and the console view in Salesforce. We'll talk about what the differences are and what are the advantages of the disadvantages of both. We'll talk about the core object of the service cloud, which is called cases. We'll then be talking about the knowledge article and the community out and the best community that's been built out so far on how we can be leveraged to navigate and to help each other in terms of customers and to have a first case solutions. We'll also be talking about service features, some of the out of box features that's available with Salesforce. So the standard view and the console view. The standard view is what you're used to if you're using Salesforce Sales Cloud. And then the console view is available for Sales Cloud as well. However, the console view is a lot more user friendly when it comes to Service Cloud. You're able to open multiple tabs within the tab itself, and you're able to see a lot more information within itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our Salesforce instance, and we're going to first look at the regular Service Cloud view. So I'm opening up my Service app. As you can see, it's very similar to your sales apps. You have your object tabs at the top and you have your case tabs here available. So if I was to open a case, I'll open it here. And if I want to see information about the contact on this case, which is Edna Frank, I'll most likely open it into a different tab. Now, if I wanted to see a different case, I'd have to open my case into a different tab now and open up my new case into another tab. And as you can see, I'm already opening up so many different tabs that it's going to start piling up. And if I want to navigate, I literally have to click on each tab to see where I am. And this is where our service console becomes very user friendly. As you can see, for each case, I have a tab open and any information that I open within that case opens up a new tab. So we're going to actually start from scratch. I'm going to open up my 1002 case. As you can see, my 100 is open. 1001 is open. So let's open up 1002. And as you can see, it opened up a fourth tab right here. And it says seeking guidance for optical wire installation. And this is opened by Stella. So let's say if we want to see something about Stella that's not already visible on my tab right here. As you can see, I already have a contact component which shows uh, Stella's email and phone number. But let's say I want to see something else. I click on Stella. And it actually opens up a tab underneath my 1002 case for Stella, and I'm actually able to see information here. If I wanted to go to my 1001 case, I simply click here, and I already have information open on my contact, which is Abby Green, and I also have information already opened on my United Oil. As you can see, I'm doing all this within the one tab, and it's so much more easier for me to navigate with these tabs and open up and see all the information that I want to see. Ideally, you want to have these components right here, show as, inf as most valuable information as possible, so you're not navigating as often. But of course, there may be time where you do need to navigate to different records. So therefore, this console view is a lot more easier to navigate through. The core object of Salesforce is cases. If you remember from our sales module, there was accounts, contacts, leads, and opportunity. But with cases, we still use our accounts, opportunities, and um, contacts. We usually don't use leads because a prospect is not going to necessarily have a case about your product. So cases represent any issue your client is calling you about. And it helps track issues about a product or about an account that happens often. This way, we can see if a product needs an upgrade or if you need to discontinue your product or if an account maybe 
needs an implementation manager or an expert to kind of go in and help. So there might be some um, upsell opportunities as well. So if you remember from our console view, our cases show the issues that the contact is calling about. In this case, starting generator after electrical failure. So in our case, Rose Gonzalez called about this and it talks about what the case reasons are. Now keep in mind, these are all out of box features. You can customize the fields that you see here. You can customize to see, have an field call solution where you're able to track um, what the solution was. If I wanted to, I can add information right here, just saying simply restart. This was a solution for this case itself. Now I'm putting it as internal comments. You can, these comments are not visible by you know, your customers who might be caught logging into communities. And we'll be talking about communities in a bit. Um, so cases really help you track any information that's, um, that your customer is calling about. So imagine you use Salesforce and something is not working as expected. You open up a case with support agent and a support agent calls you and they're using exactly this to track that conversation. And they're also using this to track what type of activities they've had. So let's say they try to email you, they try to contact you, they'll be able to track all that right here as well. Now, knowledge articles and communities. Knowledge articles comes to um, the first help solutions. So what that is pretty much, when you first call for a case, your tier one agent is able to tackle these cases on the first, on the first try, especially when the issue that you're calling about is very repetitive, the knowledge article will have a solution for repetitive cases. So it's things that are easy to fix and that are often being called about. So someone that doesn't know how to reset a password, someone that doesn't know how to um, create a brand new user, these kind of articles are available for tier one agents so that they're able to give the first time solutions, saving time and saving the customer calling back and trying to escalate cases. Communities is very similar where customers can actually help each other. Um, they can also track their own cases and see how their cases are doing and any other comments that are in there. So if we actually go to our browser, we should be able to open up Salesforce success community. Now this is the Salesforce community itself where we'll be able to do exactly what we just talked about. So this is a very, um, very neat community where, as you can see, there's a lot of information here. So you can, they can actually collaborate with other customers talking about the same information. Um, they can also ask about tickets right here. So right here, we're talking about David David is, has actually put in a uh, question right here and Prasant has actually been able to answer that question. And David David has actually shows this the best answer. So that let's say if I have the same exact issue, I'm able to come here and know this is a solution right away. And you can look at unanswered questions, you can look at unsolved questions, and you can even collaborate with them. You can also search here. And when you search right here, how to add how to add a new user. And as you can see, Nid Nidhi Sani asked the same thing. And we're able to see that Mayank was able to give the best answer. So you can actually read the article to see, okay, it says how to add a new user and then marketing license. And so we're able to see that everyone tried to ask that question and here's a solution right here. So this is the community where you're able to collaborate for cases as well as you can actually collaborate. Oh, we need to log in for that. You can actually collaborate with ideas. So something, a feature that is not available in Salesforce, you can actually put that idea right here and hope that it gets most votes. And when it has enough votes, it'll actually go under what's called product team review. This means that Salesforce is actually able to um, implement this feature as, or they're looking at it. And you can see this one, it's not at that threshold where the product team will actually um, review this feature itself. So Salesforce actually allows you to create your own community. So if you actually go to your community, 
or your sandbox, you will actually have the option to create your community. So I actually have my community open right here. It's a very basic, it's not as um, amazing as a Salesforce community, of course. It's very basic where I'm able to create cases quickly. Um, uh, this is a partner community, so a partner can actually log in and track their leads and opportunities. They can actually have their marketing team come in and do campaigns. You can also have a news and updates. So if you have chatter uh, available, you can actually put information about something that's happening in your community, in your company, and any updates that's coming. So if you are having maybe a new product release or update, you can have that under the news and information. Um, these are again, because of part of the community, I'm able to track my opportunity here as well. Now, if you want to do a community where other people can log in like a customer, you would need what's called a customer community license. This license is a lot more um, cost friendly and it has different features as opposed to a regular Salesforce license or a partner Salesforce license. And in terms of knowledge article, this is again, the best knowledge article that's available. So if I put in how to add new user, new user Salesforce, these are your knowledge articles right here. Again, as you can see, my first search takes me to my Salesforce success community, and there's actually a knowledge article about adding users. And right here, they, the way that they have it set up, they actually talk about where, where it's available, what permission is needed, and it actually talks about the steps that you need in order to add a brand new user. Now you would have to build all this out in your Salesforce community in order to get these features working. Lastly, here are some of the uh, features that comes out of Salesforce. Case assignment rules, web to case, email to case, and news. Case assignment rules is simply um, assigning case to either a queue or an agent based on criteria. So think of it as your lead assignment rule. So you can have either round robin or you can have criteria based assignment. Web to case allows your customers to actually create a case from your website. So you can actually have a website where for support where they actually can create a case saying who they are, what their email address is, and simply creating a case for their problem. An email to case is when a customer can email you the information about the issue that they're having and it directly creates a case record. And news, like we talked about, is a feature that you can have in your Salesforce um, community where you can talk about your releases or maybe if a product is down at the moment. Those are all the information so that your customers are not calling in to find out what's going on. Rather, they go to their website and find out that at this moment, this feature is not working because it's under maintenance. So you don't have thousands of customers calling you. So if you go back to our Salesforce instance, as you can see, web to case can be set up right here. So if you use a simple web form with maybe first name, last name, or first name, last name, company name, an email address, and a box for what the case is. That will create a case from the website to your Salesforce org. You will simply need to add the HTML code that you will get once you set this up to your website. You can also do email to case where you, if you have your Outlook or your Gmail synced to Salesforce, a customer can easily set that email and from there you can create the case rather than copying and pasting information. And lastly, case assignment rules is also available right here. Case assignment rules talks about, again, automatically assigning cases to users or queues based on the criteria that we define. There's a standard case assignment rules that's built out of the box and it's pretty much going by countries and your SLA. So SLAs are service level agreements and who it should be going to. Of course, all these are gonna be assigned to one person because in the sandbox, there's only one person available. You can also create a case auto response. And this is usually for when a case is created, you can send out an email saying, hey, this case has been created and we're looking into it. If you ever create a case with Salesforce support, you would see this feature uh, where you get an email saying, hey, this case has been looked at. And you will also get a comment when somebody is actually looking into a case. So these are some of the features that's out of the box that we can set up so that your daily creation of cases and your how you handle them is a lot more easier.